All right, good morning. Actually, it's impressive how many people it's a second day. Um, maybe it wasn't that wet of a social last night then. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we've done the last half year. And, um, one of the things that we are uh, in the planning of is, is a NetNode Copenhagen rebuild. Uh, we, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit of the new products we're going to introduce, a uh, little bit of the time plan for, for continuous work, and uh, a little bit also about the route server update we did uh, earlier this week. <coughs> so, um, last year when we sat down and, and looked at the NetNode Copenhagen, we realized that we had two issues. Uh, one is the capacity of the, the boxes will, would run out. And the one other thing is that our transmission between the, the Malmö and Copenhagen area uh, wasn't that easy to expand. So that caused us to, to uh, start off a RFP uh, to, to some vendors uh, looking for a new solution for both layer zero, one, and two. Uh, so we, we uh, did this work uh, starting in October, sent about this, this RFP to uh, 11 vendors, uh, started off uh, a series of long meetings with a lot of coffee and a lot of discussions, uh, a lot of, of analyze and uh, thinking. And, and uh, now actually we are coming into a position where we actually are a couple of weeks away from writing a contract with, with the new vendors. Um, so we, when we've done this, we, we will just kick off in, in, in doing a, a plan of migration. And the plan is to actually have migrated the whole NetNode Copenhagen to a new platform, both layers 0 and 1 and 2, uh, by before end of Q2. So when we sat down and, and started to discuss what we would do uh, when, when we did the, the rebuild, we, we, um, we know that some of you customers actually like the, the fact that we have a redundant platform uh, and you can get an a, a A and B port uh, in Stockholm. So we tried to do this also in, in Copenhagen. So we will introduce... Uh, redundancy in Copenhagen. We also know that some of you customers do, don't like the, the double ports that we have in, in Stockholm. Um, so we will also actually introduce a single port in Stockholm when we come to, to the rebuild of that platform. And also we will uh, launch some optical IX products to help your operators get between the different data centers uh, at the places we are present, because um, both Copenhagen and Malmö, the, the data centers is, is, is generally a little bit, uh, quite a bit afar. The fiber isn't cheap at all, and, and you actually need transmission equipment to, to provide that kind of services. So that will do. Um, going into next, uh, the new products that options that we will introduce now with a new platform. Uh, the redundant port that we are currently have in Stockholm. We will introduce this in, in Copenhagen by introducing a second VLAN, peering LAN, and we will build two different networks, one green network and one blue network. And all the, the redundant ports will get one port from the blue net peering LAN and one port from the green peering LAN. Basically the same way it's, it's, it's done and, and made in, in uh, Stockholm today. And this will be available directly after rebuild, so early Q3 next year we will be able to provide these kind of ports. Then we have the, the single port uh, that we currently have in, in Copenhagen. Uh, we also introduced this one in, in Stockholm. So where you, you will get one, one non-redundant, one single port connected to both the blue and, and, and green peering lands. Uh, so you will still have connectivity to, to both sides, but you will just get one port 
with, with all the VLANs on it. And this will be available late Q3 uh, in Stockholm. Continuing on to, to uh, the, the next area of, of, of products, the, the new optical IX products, um, we will have the, the new optical layer one product, which is a point-to-point -point connection between any of the on-net location in that area. So we currently don't provide connections between Copenhagen and Malmö. Uh, this will be either 10 gig or 100 gig connections between the, the, the on-net locations. And in Copenhagen, we will be able to provide that in Q3. And in Stockholm, we will be able to, to provide that Q4. Then we have the optical IX Spectrum product that's, um, that we also will be provide up on request that we can provide a point-to-point -point 50 gigahertz DVD-M channel between any of the on-net locations um, for your operator to use for whatever you want to do. Um, this is a, a, a non-DCM-compensated network, so you would need to, to have that in mind, when, wh whatever equipment you put onto that DVD-M wavelength. That would be also available at the same time as the other optical IX products. And then the final thing is that if, if you have a, a site that you don't, we don't have on that location on, then you can actually c contact us and request that we build a a, a on-net location at your site, and that will do open, open requests. And, and that will be able to get your data center or your, your uh, location as calculated as an on-net place for both layers here, one and two. Then uh, a bit of recap on prices. The, from the 1st of July, uh, these prices will be the, the new pre-prices for both Copenhagen and Stockholm, where the 100 gig redundant port will be 995,000 krona per year, uh, 100 gig single is 550 krona per year, the, single, the 10 gig redundant will be 198,000 per year, and the 10 gig single will be 90,000 per year. And also, if, if you order another port of either the 100 gig redundant or 100 gig single, you'll get 40% discount on the second port and the subsequent port. And for the optical IX part, we will have um, 100 gig port point to point will be 276,000 per year, and the 10 gig point to point link will be 24,000 per year. And if you want to have Spectrum or, or a, cu a customer node, please contact us and we will give you that on, up on request. And then, a little bit of the time plan for, for this. Uh, we will, uh, as I said before, we will uh, re have the rebuild done in, in Copenhagen before end of Q2. Uh, we will start the rebuild of Stockholm beginning of, of Q3 and be, be finished before end of Q4 probably somewhere in the middle of Q4, if everything goes as planned. And final and last thing that I was going to talk about is the route server update. Uh, as some of you know that, that is using the, the route server that we announced to, to uh, start doing IR-based based filtering, which we did last Tuesday. The result of this is actually quite interesting. Um, about average 79,000 routes we, we still accept. We, we filter about 3,800 prefixes. And out of those 3,800 prefixes, actually 2,600 is coming from one peer. I won't disclose who it is, but yeah. So. Please do update your filters, make sure that you have all your IRR data up to date, and this will not be an issue for you. While we were at it we, and, and doing some, some modification of, of the route servers, we also uh, take the opportunity to implement large communities. So now 
as of, of Tuesday, we do support these large communities to, to uh, handle and, and uh, uh, change how you, you want to, your prefix to be handled. We have the, the communities to, to steer which peers you want to an announce it to and steer how many times you want to prepend a AS to a certain peer. That was my short update for new products and other changes we've done. Any questions? No, everybody asleep. Uh, we have a question over okay. here. If you, just, if you just wait for the microphone, thanks. Hop. Okay, Nordenet. So the layer zero product here is, of course, very interesting for me. So is this a Rodem-based uh, service? Is it a wavelength selector switch there, or is it just point-to-point -point links with uh, filters on it? It's a Rodem-based service. Thank you.